Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the last VR news episode for 2016. Hope you guys had a kick ass 2016. Think about it, it was the year VR finally became a thing. This time last year, we were jonesing for it still. We'd been waiting forever, and it felt like the last few months would be another forever to have to wait through. Finally, it came. There were issues, supply chain, quality. We managed to kind of stumble and bumble our way through that. Finally got some stability, and now here, right at the end of December, growth, which is a good thing. So uh, to all of you who've helped grow this channel, just a huge thank you to you and yours. Hoping you guys have the best, safest, positive, focused 2017 possible. Cheers to all of you. Cheers to those of you in time zones because of my slow editing who are probably watching this on New Year's Day. And of course, a cheers to those of you like me on the West Coast. Hey, it's beer o'clock somewhere. Cheers to us as well. Happy New Year's, guys. All right, let's move on and talk about the touch, my touch. So, today was about 360 degree testing. And the 180 stuff went fairly well, despite, you know, what I had said. And I'm going to go back and retest those things. But today was about 360 degree testing using just stock. No extensions for the sensors, just completely stock and no third sensor either. Because of the length of the cables, I had to go diagonal and the cables were really pulled tight and I had lots of tracking issues. But I'm fairly convinced the tracking issues were my issue based on how I had set it up, probably incorrectly. So it's going to require some more testing. Plus, I bought that extension cable that I needed uh, to make it more comfortable to configure because I can go back to front rather than just diagonal or test the diagonal, of course, properly. So in terms of the 360, what more am I going to test? Well, I'm going to go back to stuff like Arizona Sunshine right away and check that out and just see how the room scale feels in general. The cable is brand called Certified Data. We have a pharmacy here called London Drugs. They're mostly Western Canada. Well, I shouldn't say that. There are some in the East too, I believe. But anyways, they also have a computer department and it's their brand, Certified Data. So I'm going to link that just in case somebody wants a no fuss, guaranteed to work USB 3 extension for the Rift. That would be an option for you. Plus it's coming from Canada. So depending on where you live, it may not cost that much. All right, let's talk about uh, to-dos in general. So the forum finally launched yesterday, which is good. It's definitely a work in progress. There's no branding really yet, but I think the forums are starting to take structure. I've put up quite a bit of tutorials and how-tos already for some of the uh, forums. That's only going to grow. The part that I'm excited about the most, guys, is the looking for group kind of multiplay forum. So if you go in there, you're going to notice that Xlord B, who's a longtime viewer of the channel, him and Stony, they've got a link to a website, which is going to be exactly that. Focus VR gaming, multiplayer, team speak, the whole nine yards. Now, with regards to how to use that, I'll probably have a template up, but even if you don't go to their website, I want that forum to be a place that you could hook up. And that's my version of hookup, not the millennial version. Although if you want to do that, that's your bag. <laughs> Feel free, all right? But anyways, where I was going with that is, yeah, so if you need somebody for co-op or multiplay, hopefully that becomes a resource to do exactly that. All right, let's talk about the first news piece and just one of a few exciting things to look forward to in 2017. This is Pimax, who, yeah, I think it was the summer when I last talked about them, has 
had a product they were talking about, but we didn't have proof of anything. There's no tangible physical product yet until today. And apparently at CES next week when they unveil it, 4K per eye. The question is definitely going to be for many of you, is this going to address the screen door effect? And my answer would be for most people, yes. Don't kid yourself, there's still gonna be people who see it. 4K is within the range of human vision, especially with that thing an inch and a bit away from your eyeballs to spot it. So hopefully it reduces it drastically, but to think it's gonna be a instant cure, no. No, no, definitely no. There are people who are gonna notice it, just like me with my damn dead pixels. So, but hopefully it's minimized to a huge degree. And that would be my, my guess. It would be more than the half that it would seem to indicate because of just doubling the resolution. All right. Skeptical things about this. Not so much skeptical as I want to see the outcome of the 200 degree field of view. That is almost double what we currently have. And I want to see how they pull that off because... Having worked with optics in amateur astronomy, etc., I would expect some warping, but who knows? I'm sure they've addressed that. Again, can't wait to see it, test it, and have my own opinion on it. So look for that again uh, at CES and in line, if you think about it, with Abrash's predictions. So some of his predictions, let's face it, they were pretty uh, pretty easy to say, but still, very cool that it's starting this quickly. Next news piece, yet another one of these neat, exciting product, potential products for 2017. This one is called Quick VR, and I'm more excited about this than even the last, because I know we're going to get to 4K eventually anyways, and I just want more experiences, games, for what we have right now. I'm, I'm happy for now. Now, this is a wireless solution, Quick VR, and it works Vive, Rift, it doesn't care. The difference between this and TPCast, for example, other than the fact that it's Rift, Vive, uh, is the fact that with this solution, they're using five gigahertz. They're not using the 60 that TPCast uses. So the benefit there immediately is going to be not having to worry about the line of sight stuff as much as you would with the 60. But now you've got the challenge of getting that data bandwidth across and there's going to be compression. Either way, there would be compression, but the figures are pretty high for this, 95%. Now, the author of the article, he did state he noticed artifacting. And I would expect, yeah, there to be artifacting. The question is, how much? Is it immersion busting? That remains to be seen. That's the kind of stuff that hopefully will get tested sooner rather than later, and we'll have an answer to that. Because it's one thing to say artifacts, but if it happens one in a thousand, who cares? If it's a pretty constant, consistent thing, not as cool, so... We'll find out, and we will know very, very shortly. Also, just the last thing on that is their battery life, four hours apparently. So pretty much in line with TPCAS lower end option. They've got the higher end one at six hours. Next news story, Nokia and their Ozo player. So this is the more enterprise level 360 camera, this Ozo. And... One of the things I've been very curious about is how will the content created with that differ from something created on, say, the Gear 360? Because the price difference is huge. It's 40,000 US separ separating these two kits. That is one thing, okay? So they've announced today, they've released the SDK. So we'll probably get answers to that because that is huge, is justifying $45,000. Just because it has the label enterprise, does that necessarily mean it's going to be enterprise? 
I don't think so. I think that will have to be proven. So really excited about that as well. And just want to see comparisons, you know, apples to apples. Do one filming in Gear 360, then show me one with Ozo and let us come to the conclusion on, you know, whether it's worth that price difference or not. Next one and last one, until my own are released on my videos, another top 10 gaming list. What I liked about this one though, guys, is it was not specific to just Rift or Vive or PlayStation. It was for all three. And, well, we'll see. I probably got the list up here already. So hone in on number one, will you? Exactly. I like this list because that's my choice. Elite Dangerous, despite not being built from the ground up, and I explain this a lot to people, is absolutely my favorite virtual reality experience because that simple move of putting you in the cockpit in VR is just magical. You are in that ship. It's your ship. It's your floating hotel, home, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's amazingly realistic and breathtaking to land for your first time in this big rotating space station or exit without crashing into something. Your first pirate battle or mining expedition. There's just so much fun and so much to do that absolutely it's my number one and probably the number one of quite a few other people as well. So I will have that and the other videos trickle in over what's left of my vacation. I'm gonna go back to some 360 testing. Cheers as always, guys. And again, Happy New Year to you and yours. Catch you on the VR flip side.